The female body is less capable of withstanding g-force than the male body. Now that may sound like an incredibly politically correct way of saying that men are stronger than women, but that is not what I'm trying to say with this statement. What I'm referring to is this. Over and over again. The key factor in surviving a car crash is the amount of force the body can withstand. According to the NHTSA, the 50th percentile female can withstand around 65 times the force of gravity, with a comparable male being able to withstand another 10G on top of that. So with that factoid in mind, you can see why women are 73% more likely to sustain an injury in a crash. Because of this, there has been some scrutiny of crash test procedures, specifically about the fact that most crash test dummies in use today are modeled after the 50th percentile male. So women make up 51% of the population, we are 51% of the drivers, but nothing in this car's safety is really geared towards us. So none of our injuries are being accounted for, we are 17 to 19% more likely to die in the same accident as a man, and 73% more likely to be injured. That is what my previous statement about the female body being less capable of withstanding g-force is about. The fact that because of women's anatomy and flawed crash test procedures, we don't make cars for women. Hello people of the internet, I'm Nico, not a woman clearly, and having spent the last few weeks researching dummies, not this dummy, crash test dummies, and also injury statistics from car crashes, I want to explain why we have not and will not make cars for women specifically. So let's look at the female body. Um, not in that way. Let's look at why the female body is more likely to sustain injuries in a car crash. The female body is obviously very different from the male body, from average height and weight to bone density and other body dimensions. So let's start with the first difference, height. Height can play out in many different ways. Long legs, short back, short legs, long back, short arms, long legs, all of which will require a unique setup for optimum safety. This is of course tricky for car makers because it's much easier to make a one-size-fits-all configuration than it is to make individual configurations for every customer. So the happy medium is adjustability, but the adjustability can be insufficient. Maybe you have a short back and the height adjustment on the seat doesn't allow you to get high enough to see properly, which would likely also compromise the effectiveness of the airbag. Or you have short legs, but the steering wheel can't be adjusted back enough, so you end up sitting right in front of the steering wheel, which might cause the airbag to hit you in the chest, pushing your body back while your head still accelerates forward. To further complicate things, because of women's anatomy being so different, the size and shape of a seat and or placement of airbags might need to be different from what is required to keep men safe. The other side of the anatomy problem though, is with what the female body can withstand. One area that is particularly vulnerable in accidents are women's joints. Because of the higher levels of estrogen, which is responsible for the ligaments in women's bodies being more lax, combined with smaller vertebrae, women are more likely to suffer spinal injuries in an accident. Though this specific injury can also be partially attributed to driving position from women often sitting closer to the steering wheel due to their height, the effect and the problem remains the same. Another area that is vulnerable to injury is the hip and pelvis. Because of generally wider pelvis measurements, along with generally lower bone density, women are more likely to suffer pelvic fractures. In all fairness, I'm sure the statistics are affected by scenarios of user error, but even so, expanding the range of motion for the seats, the steering wheel, and even the seatbelt mounting points would greatly increase safety for a wider range of occupants. That of course would mean increasing the cost per vehicle, which is likely part of the reason these changes haven't been made. There is however another reason behind women's increased injury risk, and it's this. This is the world's most expensive doll. Oh wait, hold on. This is the world's most expensive doll. At roughly a million dollars a piece, these crash test dummies are directly responsible for our progress in making vehicles safer. And while they might pass for adult humans as well as the little rascals do, there's still enough detail to recognize that this dummy is modeled after the average adult male. 
And while it should be noted that there technically is a female version of this, the Hybrid 3 crash test dummy, it is just a scaled down version of the 5 foot 9 inch, 170 pound male version that does not account for differing bone densities and skeletal structures. That's why I made the air quotes earlier when I mentioned the female crash test dummies. Now, having learned all that, you may be inclined to storm the NHTSA crash test lab and give the scientists a piece of your mind on how women have been unfairly represented in crash tests. To which these scientists would likely respond, we've been working on that. The evolution of safety technology has not been standing still since any number of reoccurring articles highlighting this issue have been published. The NHTSA, the ones who are using a crash test dummy design from the 1970s, have been working on a new range of crash test dummies for years now and are currently in the evaluation and fine tuning stages before they are put into service. While the finalizing of the design may still take a few years more, you can rest assured that many other meaningful changes have already happened. For starters, while seats may not be able to give all the adjustability that some occupants may require, they are now packed with sensors to tell the car's computer what is occupying every seat. If you've ever noticed the passenger airbag off light before, that's what I'm talking about. Since 2005, all US cars are required to have dual stage airbags, which depending on the size and weight of the occupant will deploy at full speed, partial speed, or not at all. Because a smaller occupant may meet the airbag with the wrong part of the body or may simply be too fragile to survive the 200 mile per hour impact of an expanding airbag, Thanks to the sensors and seats and dual stage airbags, more vulnerable occupants are better protected. Another item that protects more vulnerable occupants is seatbelt force limiters. Because of the differing bone densities and anatomical differences between men, women, and children, each can only withstand a certain amount of force. And as the name implies, seatbelt force limiters limit the amount of force applied to the body depending on their weight. And finally, though this is just an idea for now, profiles would go a long way to better protect individuals. This idea has slowly emerged with select vehicles like the Genesis GV60 pictured here, but my idea takes what is there a step further. Just like a phone, you can program a fingerprint into the GV60 to start the car. But what if, with that fingerprint, you could also input body dimensions, height, back length, leg length, shoulder width, etc. And using that information, the car automatically adjusts the steering wheel placement, the seat position, the seat belt mounting points and airbag settings to suit. This should then eliminate the ability for safety technology to have an adverse effect that would be caused from an improper seating position. Of course, for security's sake, this information would ideally be kept locally on the vehicle, and of course this is just an idea for now, but if you know someone in the automotive industry, consider sharing this video with them so that this idea can at least be considered or maybe even implemented into future cars. So while there is still plenty of room for improvement and while women have historically not been prioritized in vehicle safety, there have been and are many changes to improve safety for all and for women and other vulnerable occupants in particular. Now, that being said, this video is not to convince anyone to stop advocating for women's safety in vehicle crashes. But the next time you see a headline about women not being protected in cars the same way men are, you should not worry, particularly because that specific claim often cites statistics dating back to the 1980s, according to Hannah Paul, the head of dummy testing at Mercedes. She knows a thing or two about this topic. Safety is advancing, and since women are no longer being left behind in this, there is no need to make vehicles specifically for women. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos like this where I explain how the automotive industry affects our lives and vice versa, then hit that subscribe button. It's free and it helps me out more than you might think. If you really enjoyed this video and would like to help support the channel so I can continue making these videos, then you can visit my Patreon page where for like three bucks a month, you can watch these videos ad free plus a few other bonuses. Until next time, people of the internet, peace out.